Hi, everybody. So this is video number two on how our digestive system works. So in video number one, we were talking about the uh, beginning. So it starts in the brain, as we discussed, then the mouth, the esophagus. And in this video, we were talking about the next organ, which is the stomach. Yes, the stomach and the intestines. So how they work, how they digest the food. Okay. Just a reminder, for those who are asking about the program, the next batch will start on 1st of June and the doors will be open in May. So stay tuned if you want to enroll and join. Okay, so let's get started. So as we speak in the first video, the food from the esophagus with the peristalsis, with the uh, muscles um, contracting and releasing, goes down to the uh, stomach the esophagus sphincter, the opening, the muscle will uh, releases and to let the food enter the stomach. So in the stomach, the stomach uh, wall senses the food is there and it starts contracting and squeezing and releasing and like massage, it's um, bouncing the food and um, mixing it with the enzymes and the, uh, with the gastric juices and digesting the food furthermore. So when the stomach wall senses the food is there, uh, it releases the hormones. So hormones are the signals which triggers the stomach to produce HCL. The HCL is um, acid uh, and the pH of the HCL is from uh, 1.2 until 2, which is very acidic. So 7 is neutral. Everything which is below 7 is acidic. So 1.2 is very, very acidic. And um, together with the pepsin, it digests the protein. So the proteins are digested here in the uh, stomach. So um, we can ask ourselves, because this acid is very, very, very acidic. So if we put a drop on the, on the iron, it will rust, it will burn it. So imagine how the stomach can survive in this acidic um, uh, environment and cannot be burned, right? So this is a very interesting thing that uh, the stomach produces sticky mucus which um, lays down the, the stomach wall to protect it, not to be burned by the H HCL. The food in the stomach stays for around three hours. So the stomach is digesting the food for about three hours and it's uh, uh, making it like a paste or a liquid. And then it goes uh, from the stomach uh, through a valve like a muscle into the small intestine. The small intestine, is uh, divided in three parts. So can anybody tell me what are the names of these three parts of the intestine? And every, each and every part in the small intestine has a different function. So they're not uh, doing the same job uh, all at the same time, okay? So there are three different names of the each and every part in the small intestine. So I want to know if you know what are the names of these three parts. Okay, so from uh, the paste, the liquid from the stomach goes through the small intestine into the first part. Uh, and it goes only, it releases through a valve, through a muscle, and it can release only four milliliters per opening. And the rest stays in the stomach for further digestion, for further uh, liquefying. And then each and every time it releases four millimeters at a time. It can release only that much amount into the small intestine because they're small, they cannot hold uh, too much food. So in this first section of the small intestines, the digestion continues. And the food uh, who is already like a paste or a liquid, it's called chyme, chyme in uh, uh, the stomach. And uh, it goes further to continue digestion in the small intestine. And in this first part, the most of the biggest um, digestion and nutrient absorption happens. And this further digestion is enhanced by the enzymes produced in the three solid organs that I mentioned before. So we have one tubal organ, which is consists like a tube from the beginning of the mouth until the end, it's a tube. And three solid organs, which are helping the digestion, which is liver, pancreas, and the gallbladder. Okay, so these are very important in producing the enzymes which uh, are needed to further break down the food into the smaller particles. So liver produces bile, which is uh, stored in the gallbladder. And then the gallbladder releases this bile into the small intestine, and uh, which breaks down fat into fatty acids. 
Okay, so what is this bile consist of? So this bile consists of bile acids and bile salts, then uh, phospholipids, cholesterol, pigments, water, and electrolytes, which are uh, alkaline. The pH is from seven till eight. So imagine from so acidic environment in the stomach and this acidic HCL, the acidic uh, environment, it's very important to be acidic in order to prevent uh, um, uh, growing the, the bad bacteria. So it's killing the bad bacteria, viruses. And this is like a first defense, our first defense that um, uh, it's protecting us not to get uh, uh, harmful bacteria and pathogens from the outside world into our body. So that's why it's so acidic and we need it, this acid. And uh, if we make it alkaline in the stomach, that's uh, only going to hurt us, not help us. So next is the small intestine, which where is um, the environment is alkaline. And the pancreas produces enzymes together with the bile um, acids and salts to break down further the food. So these enzymes are um, protease to break down proteins, lipase to break down fats, and amylase to break down starches and carbs. And the wall of the small intestine also produces some enzymes and all these together uh, are digesting the food here. And this is the most important part where all, most of the nutrients are absorbed through the gut uh, wall directly into the blood because the gut wall is only one cell layer next to each other. It's very thin and it can only release the uh, digested molecules which are very, very small and tiny. Uh, like amino acids and simple sugars, and they can go directly to the blood and blood can take them uh, through, throughout whole, our whole body and feed our cells everywhere. The small intestines are five meters long and the food moves through the small intest intestines by what? I mentioned this uh, when I was talking about the esophagus. So the food moves by what? Write down below if you know. So every part of our body has a different pH. In the beginning, the mouth is uh, from 6.2 until 7.6. So it's um, around neutral plus minus a little bit. Then the esophagus is seven pH. The stomach, as I said, from 1.2 until two is very acidic. And then it begins to become alkaline again. In the first part of the small intestine, it's, um, um, between 5.6 until 8 pH, so it's becoming alkaline. And the rest of the part of the small intestine is between 7.2 and 7.5. And in the colon, the pH is from 7.9 until 8.5, so it's very alkaline. So in the next video, we will be talking about the rest of the small intestine and about the colon and the rectum, rectum and the anus. So don't forget to subscribe because I'm sending reminders in uh, on your email also when the new video is released and uh, subscribe on the link in the description. And if you miss to follow my page and to see or when I post it on my page, then you definitely um, won't miss it when you receive the email about a new video released. So see you next time. Bye.